On the number line, we typically have negative numbers to the left and positive numbers to the right. And right in the middle, the number 0, that position, is referred to as the origin. And the number 0 isn't positive or negative. The positive and negative numbers are sometimes referred to as signed numbers because they have a positive or a negative sign with them. And the signed numbers include all the numbers on the number line except the number 0. And even though we call these signed numbers, it's pretty typical to leave the sign off when writing a positive number. So you could write negative 3, and you could write positive 3, but it's, it's, it's ordinary to, to not write that positive sign right there. So you, you, you could just write, for example, negative 3 and 3. If you're writing a negative number, though, you always include the negative sign. The set of all integers, and that's an important mathematical term, the set. The set of all integers consists of all the counting numbers, that's 1, 2, 3, and so on, the way we naturally count. They're negatives, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and so on, and 0. And we can write this using set notation. You put an open curly brace, and then you put what we call the members of the set. We'll write them like this, 0, 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2, 3, negative 3, and so on. And put your close curly brace. Now these three dots here indicate that this, this pattern continues. We've established a pattern here, 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2, 3, negative 3. After that, obviously, would follow 4, negative 4, 5, negative 5, and so on. And they would go on indefinitely. But we can't write forever. We can't write all of them. So we just establish the pattern and then put the three dots to indicate that the pattern continues. These three dots are sometimes referred to as ellipses. And that's a really unfortunate name because the term ellipse also is used mathematically to mean something entirely different. An ellipse is an oval, basically. It's like a circle with two centers, an elongated circle. But the term shows up here as well to name those three dots. The name isn't all that important as, um, as understanding the concept. You need to know that those three dots mean that pattern continues. And this whole idea of set notation is a pretty big deal in higher mathematics. It's not that critical to the study of math at this level, but it's used a lot just to show sets of numbers. So you do need to know what it is. In this set notation, you have these open and closed curly braces, and then within them what we call all the members of the set. And because set notation is an important mathematical concept, it's, it's commonly used, even uh, at this level of math, just to represent groups of numbers. And here are a couple of examples. Plot the following numbers on the number line shown. Now, on the number line that we see here, it's not uh, marked off in units of 1. So we have to imagine here, for example, between 0 and 5, we have to imagine 1, 2, 3, and 4, and so on in all the other places as well. But we want to plot these numbers. And to do that, we just put a little dot on the number line at the appropriate place. So negative 10 is easy. It's right there. Uh, there. Um, 1 is about right there. And it's a bit of an estimate to find the exact spot. We can never get exactly correct. But as close as you can, as well as you can estimate, Put it right there. And 7 would be about right here. It's between 5 and 10, and a little bit closer to 5 than to 10. And 13 would be here, a little bit closer to 15 than it is to 10. And in this next example, we're just told to circle the numbers that are integers. So 62 is an integer. Decimal numbers are not and a fraction like that is not an integer. 140 is an integer. 140.3 is not. And negative 8 is an integer. 